So here we have uh, unit 13, questions 49 to 51. Starts about talking about activation energy. And hopefully it comes to your mind that activation energy is the minimum energy to give to a system um, for a chemical reaction to occur. So hopefully that, you know, that sort of comes to your mind and, and you, you notice the, uh, the curve and you recognize it um, because you've seen this type of curve before. Uh, perhaps drawn nicer than this, but um, and and that you recognize that the energy required for the reaction to occur to to help it to occur to get to the transition state or the activated complex, which is up here, the that energy required, which is right here, that is indeed. Um, the activation energy and then hopefully also you recognize that you have the reactants up here the products are lower down meaning they're more stable you know it's just like if you have a book or, or a vase on your table uh, it, it'll be more stable if you put it on the floor so things are more stable if you put them lower so the these products are, are more stable and to get there energy must have been given off um, and so this would be an exothermic reaction energy would be given off delta h would be negative um, and obviously there's a difference in the heat energy uh, between the um, uh, products and the uh, reactants and had this been the reverse an endothermic reaction um, the, the the reaction would be something like this and the products would be higher and the activation energy would be a lot higher uh, from there to there so, uh, question 49, um, the answer is A, of course, it's, it's going from E1 to E2, and, and that would represent uh, this part of the curve, and that's the activation uh, energy. And then, um, question 50, assume that the rate of reaction is uh, 10 times faster at uh, 32 degrees and 22 degrees the best of the following estimates um, for the uh, calculator. Yeah. Okay, well first thing is to notice that the, um, the answers A, B, C, D are, um, are pretty far apart so we can um, be a little uh, uh, comfortable with our estimations. We don't have to take everything uh, uh, to be uh, too precise. So first uh, we would notice that uh, the temperature uh, T2 is equal to uh, 32 um, plus the, uh, uh, to be Kelvin, it would be 32 plus 273. Um, T1 uh, would be uh, 22 um, plus 273. Then we have the ratio of the, uh, of the constants, okay, because we're, we're told that uh, it is occurring um, uh, is it uh, by a factor of 10? The rate of reaction increases by a factor of 10. So uh, here's our factor of 10. Um, we have uh, the gas constant, which is a constant, is uh, 8.3. Okay, I just want to explain something because you might be wondering what, what permitted me to say K2 over K1 is equal to 10 when they said assume that the rate of a reaction is 10 times faster. So let me just uh, clarify this. The rate law is, is something uh, like this. It's rate is equal to K, a concentration of something times the concentration of something is, you know, one could be first order or second order reactions or, or perhaps only one of the reactants are involved, whatever. But this is the point. This is the general look of the rate law. So the rate is equal to this. Now, if you are not changing this, you are not changing the concentrations of these compounds, you're not changing the stoichiometry or anything. If you have 10 times the rate, we are talking about uh, 10 times the K uh, value, the rate constant. So, um, because the rate constant is going to be constant at that temperature. So, um, we are talking about increasing the temperature and, uh, and having um, a rate of reaction which is 10 times faster. So all that's included in the numbers that I've uh, put there for you. So now we, um, we, we go to the uh, equation that we're provided and we have 2.3 uh, log 10, um, okay, because uh, the rate constant 
uh, that reduces to uh, 10 because uh, we're going 10 times the amount and uh, EA um, the activation energy over 8.3 which is R and uh, then we have 10 on top which is the change in temperature and uh, we have 305 uh, times uh, 295 so now uh, we have uh, all this data and now we just uh, do a little because the answers are far enough apart we'll do a little bit of estimating instead of 2.3 we're going to use 2.5 for that uh, log 10 we don't have to estimate we know it's just one um, 8.3 I think we'll do better with 8 and um, we have 305 times 295 we're going to treat that as 300 times 300 and uh, that's going to make things easier so here um, with uh, with 8 in the denominator we can multiply both sides by the number 8 and 8 times 2.5 uh, well that's uh, just going to be 20 so we have 20 we have that is equal to EA uh, the activation energy and that's going to be equal to um, 10 in the uh, numerator, uh, 300 times 300, uh, so that's 9, and then 1, 2, 3, 4 zeros. Uh, so that's what we have so far. We've got um, um, 1, 0 cancelling here, and then uh, we multiply both sides by 9,000, and then we get EA is equal to 180 kilojoules because it would be 180,000 joules so it's 180 kilojoules we look for the answer and uh, we have 200 kilojoules and that's close enough and so uh, 50 is D now 51 <clears throat> um, uh, for this uh, I think I'll just change uh, uh, marker and uh, 51 is looking at um, Assume the rate of reaction increases by a factor of 10 when the temperature increased by 3. For a larger temperature increase from the same initial temperature, the rate of the same reaction is found to increase by 100. Which of the following temperature increases would most likely explain this? Okay, so um, I'm not going to rewrite the equation, okay? <laughs> um, I'm, I'm a little bit conservative uh, with the space here, but... Uh, Let's, if we're looking at the original equation, okay, we've got 2.3 log, and um, in the original equation we have uh, K2 over K1, okay, so it's uh, K2 over K1 over here, okay, so we have 2.3 log K2 over K1, and um, what's, in it, instead of it being 10 times, in fact, I shouldn't even written this, I should have left the 10 times here, instead of it being 10 times, it's 100 times. So what changed on the left side of the equation if this is 100 times? Instead of being log 10, which is 1, it's log 100, which is 2. So all we did for the left side of the equation is by making it uh, 100 times, we ended up multiplying the left side of the equation by 2. Now we have to figure out how in order to keep this an equation equal we have to find something on the right side of the equation to um, to multiply by two or to increase by two well the gas constant is not going to help us because because it's constant uh, ea is not going to help us because the activation energy um, does not change with temperature i know you might think well doesn't it change with temperature <laughs> no the activation energy only increases the number of particles that, um, I'm sorry, the temperature only increases the number of particles that have the needed activation energy for a reaction to occur. But the activation energy itself is just the number, the limit uh, for which you must obtain in order for the reaction uh, to proceed. In fact, if you look at the Maxwell distribution plot in uh, Chem 412, uh, that will uh, give you the background uh, on that. So, um, we know this is not going to change. The denominator will change very, very little by uh, any change. So then, in order to make it up, we have to double the change in temperature. So the change in temperature before was 3 degrees. 
if we double it, make it two times, we change this to six degrees, then we have balance on both sides of the equation because we doubled this after this was doubled. Um, so the answer would be six degrees. And, uh, and for uh, information about uh, reaction rates and things like that, you can go to uh, uh, Chem 9.5 for more information. <laughs>